It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with Walkabout Wednesday, and today we feature Bentley the Succulent Dog. So you guys have been asking about Bentley, and since he's not allowed in the backyard, it occurred to me you never get to see him anymore, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. So uh, a little update on Bentley. He is doing great. We had been here a couple of weeks, and we were walking down to the park, and he was fine, and then one day he decided, nope. And we got a few steps down the street and he wanted to come back home. Tail between the legs, very concerned. That went on for days until finally I decided, you know what, he needs to power through because there was no reason for it that I could see. Um, so we powered through and now we're back to being fine on our walk. So he's doing great here. Uh, we're back to doing our, you know, our regular morning constitutionals. We let him pee and poo out here in the, uh, in the front yard. Um, no big deal. You know, we take him out uh, a couple of times a day, and that's basically the routine that he had in Chula Vista. You know, it's just that we let him out in the back. So it's, it's not really any different for him. I just can't have him. Uh, I haven't been able to really identify a good place for him to go back there, and I don't want him peeing on my new garden. So that's my story with Bentley. Uh, I also, this morning, went and rummaged around in the back uh, over in the shady area, and I pulled some more cuttings for in anticipation of planting this front area around the fountain. Now, this fountain, I haven't put water on it for a couple of weeks. As you know, it stays pretty shady. It gets a little bit of morning sun. And here in Vista, guys, it has been humid, too. It's not just hot. Particularly in the mornings, it is downright sticky. There's um, condensation all over my car. Uh, there's condensation all over the patio furniture, the umbrellas. And that's legit moisture. So, you know, the plants are getting some moisture. And I have been checking the soil in the fountain. It isn't dried out, which really surprised me. Things look really happy. Remember when I planted this, this little Echeveria, you know, it had the brand new beautiful baby blooms and it was so pretty. And I expected to come out here and find aphids all over these Echeveria blooms. Um, I was wanting to talk to you about that, but there are none. It's not a single aphid which actually bums me out because I wanted to do a whole thing on aphids, but I don't have any. <laughs> but if you do, um, little black creepy crawlies all over your blossoms, cut those things off, cut the blooms off. You can um, really help mama out by doing that too because she is throwing so much energy into these blooms and it can stress her out. Everything in this fountain I haven't really looked at it very closely at all since I planted it, but look how happy everything is. Everything. I mean, like, legit everything. I don't see a single casualty. Even these little Vera Higgins that tend to etiolate if they don't get enough light are staying really nice and compact. They're not stretching out at all like they are in the, um, in the girl's head. So... Yeah, I mean, everything looks tight in here. So we'll just continue to keep an eye on this. So far, I am super encouraged, and I think the fountain is going to be extraordinarily happy in this spot. I brought, these are things that I didn't show you when we moved. There are from my backyard. More of my um, aloe Cynthia Giddies. Look at those. Uh, those had originally been over by the fountain, um, by the waterfall in our, in our old garden. I brought also over, you look at these. These aeoniums are still looking pretty good, aren't they? It's been like a month, six weeks. Um, these are plants. I've got some of my Fred Ives. I've got a little crested goober right here. I think this is just ghosty. A little crested, cute little crested ghosty. And a, oh my gosh, look at that. The falcata decided, oh, you know what? We're just laying here languishing with, you know, our head cut off. But we're going to go ahead and throw off a beautiful bloom anyway. How beautiful is that? And I brought also one of my little variegated um, agave. Agaves. This is just like a ray of light, I think. 
it's not, you know, one of the really special ones like I have in the back, but it's still cute because I thought these would be great plants to work into this area around the fountain because pretty soon I am going to bust it out and I am going to plant this. Uh, so I want to acclimate these plants to the area. Um, tomorrow I'm going to run over to Waterwise Botanicals after I do a consultation in Temecula in the morning and see if I can find a nice pot for the corner here. And I'm going to plant my Sansevieria. I'm going to plant a couple of those Aeoniums, which I think will do well in here. I'm going to get a bromeliad from um, Waterwise and I'm going to do the, a whole shade arrangement and I'll do a video and show you and talk you through uh, why I chose the plants that I chose and what my expectations of those plants are going to be, how much light they're going to get, how often I'll be watering, yada, yada, yada. So there you have that. These beautiful euphorbia that Colin brought me, these are cuttings from one of his plants at his house. He lives in Bonzel, which is just east of Escondido, um, kind of in the Fallbrook area. They've just been sitting over here as cuttings for the last three weeks. They look great. They're completely unmarked. This one's even decided to throw off some blooms for me. So again, you know, these plants and these cactus um, are just dry as bones. I've been waiting to go get pots from Planter Paradise and boulders and soil so that I could complete this part of the front yard installation. Um, and everything is acclimating beautifully and looking really, really good. So yay, yay, yay. All right, let's move on around to the back. Uh, we were back here a couple of days ago and I was talking about, you know, trying to explain my process with watering. And on that video from two days ago, yesterday I didn't post because I just, <laughs> nothing for you. I mean, like nothing, I could come up with nothing. Um, so sorry about that. But uh, I'm, you know, slopping water on plants and you guys very gently pointed out how important it is if you're going to water when it's hot, you know, to wait until the evening when it's cooled down a bit. You were right. You know, I shouldn't have done that. So uh, one of you commented um, a really nice comment on why and why it's so important to water at night versus during the day and I did pin that so if you want to read that comment um, two days ago my last the last video I uploaded uh, please do here's a little cameroni eye cutting that Hannah gave me from a maintenance that she did like two months ago and it's just sitting over here here's another one just sitting over here. This one's starting to color up a little bit on the tips, but I'm waiting, you know, I'm waiting for these to turn red and these will probably go into the front too over by the fountain. I have all of these plants that are just sitting here being beautiful in the shade, waiting for their moment in the sun, no pun intended. Uh, I'll pull these into installations moving forward, you know, and also into my front yard as well. Okay, so I didn't come out here at all yesterday and I haven't been out here yet today. Today has been another scorcher, I mean, just in the, in the mid to high 90s. Uh, I, well, I did come out here yesterday and move umbrellas around, but today, uh, you know, I, I haven't been out here at all. and It's about three in the afternoon. So let's see what's going on. The succulent chair, a couple of days ago, remember we did apply a little water to the chair. Um, and looks great, just looks great. It's not, it's really too soon to see if, um, I did the right thing or the wrong thing. This little corner right here gets absolutely blasted in the later afternoon. Here's another Echeveria throwing off some really, really beautiful, beautiful blooms. Are you guys experiencing aphids on your blooms? Um, I normally do at this time of year, but... For whatever reason here, I'm not seeing them. Uh, oh, let's see here. I'm looking for damage. I'm looking for su super sun-stressed plants. I'm looking for rot. I'm looking for bugs. I'm looking for, you know, for wilt. Uh, not seeing anything yet. 
one of you uh, also commented on this spiralis. You know, I had pointed out that it's looking funky up here at the top. It started a growth spurt and then now it's not really spiraling or it looks like it's trying to go a different direction. And you pointed out that that plant, if it's shifted, turned, twisted, or moved, or put in a new exposure, uh, a new environment, it can screw up, you know, trajectory. In other words, it's pulling for the sun in a different direction. I may have screwed it up. It's just, oh my gosh, that made so much sense. I should have been really sensitive to keep it directionally placed identical. And I didn't even think about that. So I don't know what's going to happen. This is going to be funky, but you know what? It's okay. It's not like I'm entering it in a contest and I will remember, always remember at this point, as this plant continues to grow and grow and grow throughout the years, at this point is when I moved to Vista. So that'll just be a reminder for me. I'm going to put Bentley back in the house because I don't this isn't super hot right now, but it's a little warm on his feet. So I'm going to put him inside. Here you go, buddy. Go on. Oh no, Greg, it's locked. Oh no. The slider's locked. Let's put him over here. Here you go, bud. Okay. All right. We'll just... You can just wait here in the shade. All right. Um, the Petalanthus Bracteatus cuttings, they are still totally hanging in there, aren't they? Oh my gosh, I think this is going to be a slow demise as they drop, uh, drop leaves, drop flowers, um, and turn into sticks. But I promise you, in the likely in the early spring of next year, they will bolt back out but they will be rooted at that time and will be a hundred so I'm gonna be super patient with those some of you have commented that you do put water on your milii when the leaves are curly and, and yucky like this um, with no ill effects I've been afraid to do that because I haven't had great success with these plants in installations sometimes in the summertime um, but you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to apply a little water to this, this evening when the weather cools, and then we'll keep an eye on it together and we'll see if it perks back up or if it rots or what happens. It'll be a little science experiment for us. And let's go over and take a look at the sunburst crest. Oh, look, another animal has been in the sand. Look at the little prints. What do you think those are, Greg? You think it's a rabbit? Possibly. Doesn't it look like it was headed that way? Uh -huh. So it started down there and hopped through the sand. But I don't see any that it did anything, do you? I mean, it didn't poop or pee or yeah. chew on anything or disrupt anything. Ah, but look. These little uh doodads this little decorative bobbly thing was on here something no i had put all of these back after the kids left that was there fun and interesting um i'm also having to pick up a lot of pine needles from that tree right there we were talking with our landlords yesterday and they mentioned that not that long ago there was a pine tree right up against the fence that is no longer here. So I am just thankful, just thankful. I will pick up these little pine needles. It satisfies my OCD. It is not a problem. I will do that till the cows come home. All right, we were gonna go take a look at the Aeonium Crest. This has been really con a huge concern and I've been trying to keep this shaded with an umbrella and I've been fairly successful. It's, you know, I've been protecting it um, as best I can and it's okay, right? I mean, it looks, it looks all right considering it's summertime everything 
is a lot it's alive 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 i don't see any dead i mean even this little crested part down here is still got a you know some viability in it so i'm excited for cooler temps when i can really get in here and clean this up clean out all the dead leaves i don't want to mess around with it too much right now because i just don't want to upset it in any way shape or form and like I said, we will continue to keep an eye on, on the uh, Pacopodium here and see if it's alive or dead. Time will tell on that. And wanted to let you know that uh, Hannah's got a, booked a new installation in La Jolla. She's going to do a little garden for a follower as the follower's gift to her husband for his birthday. It's kind of like a surprise thing. So that's exciting. And she's going to start on that. A week from Thursday yeah a week from Thursday and that's gonna be a few day project for her uh, I've got a consultation tomorrow in Temecula uh, for a follower uh, and potential client who looks out her kitchen window at a up slight upslope and she said all that's there right now are wood chips and a concrete turtle so I'm I mean the bars low right I mean I'm very eager to get over there and see what we can do it's hot in Temecula and it's a hot exposed slope so it's going to be really challenging and fun to see what kind of beauty that we can make that'll be sustainable year-round up there and then um we're not friday because she's busy but we also have a consultation coming up next week in manhattan beach which is in los angeles a little more coastal and that's one that i'm hoping that we can drop the hammer on soon uh, because i'm pushing all of my all of my inland clients out until October, November when the weather cools down. So, yeah, you know, I hope that everything is hanging in there and going well with you in your gardens. I know so many of you are challenged with, with rain and we actually are expecting some too here in San Diego on uh, Thursday and Friday. There is a hurricane off the coast of Baja, California right now that meteorologists are tracking and it is um, predicted to drop as much as half an inch or an inch on us. But then the weather is supposed to cool down back into the high 70s immediately following that potential rain event. So I think we will be okay. Next week here, temps are predicted to be back in the 70s then I will give you guys the green light to gently start applying water to your gardens. But remember, let's do it at night when it's cool, not in the hottest part of the day uh, where the roots of your plants could actually be burnt um, by a watering event. So, and the leaves too. So let's keep the water to a minimum. Uh, and if we are gonna do it at all, wait till it's cooler in the later evening. All right, well, that's my update for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing Bentley the Succulent Dog. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for following and for all of your comments and support, subscriptions, likes, shares, and all the rest. This has been Laura Eubanks with Bentley the Succulent Dog with Walkabout Wednesday and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.